Okay, we've reached a new chapter in macroeconomics. Today we'll be talking about the ADES model. The ADES stands for the Aggregate Demand and Aggregate Supply model. And I think you would have guessed by now that the ADES model is actually made up of the Aggregate Demand Curve as well as the Aggregate Supply Curve. So what is Aggregate Demand? Well, a simple definition for Aggregate Demand would be the total demand for final goods and services given a certain price level in an economy. So this total demand actually comes from the households, the firms, and the government in a particular country, and even the foreigners. And when I say the price level here, I'm actually referring to the nominal price. Nominal price here means that the price is given in terms of dollars. So as you can see, the aggregate demand curve is actually very closely related to your ISLM model. Aggregate supply, on the other hand, is the total supply of final goods and services given a certain price level in an economy. And obviously, it is the firms that are providing this supply. We are also going to learn about the sticky wage model, which is not very important, but we're going to learn how it's actually used to derive the aggregate supply curve and why the aggregate supply curve is upward sloping. So basically, the ADS model is a macroeconomic model that explains the relationship between the general price level, which we denote as P, with the output GDP or income, which we denote as Y. So the general price level, or P, actually measures the overall prices of goods and services in an economy. So countries are going to have what we call price index, okay, so they use a price index to understand what's the price level in an economy. And more commonly, people use the Consumer Price Index, or CPI for short. And what you have to remember is that the price level is an endogenous variable, which means it is a variable that is within the model itself. Okay, And most importantly, the price level does not change by itself. It always changes because of some external factor. So a really good question to ask is, when do we use the ADS model? Well, number one, we use the ADS model when an economy has got flexible prices and wagers. One important point I need to remember is that wagers are not as flexible as prices. I will explain this later in the video. Well, it is quite obvious that you should use the ADS model when there is an economy with flexible prices and wagers because this is what the ADS model looks like. You've got the price level on the vertical axis. Okay, so when prices and wages are flexible, you know that you're going to have to analyze how prices is going to change given certain scenarios, right? So that is why you're going to need to use the ADS model when you've got flexible prices and wages. Number two, you're going to need the ADS model when you're talking about the long run. Why? Because in the long run, that's where prices and wages are flexible. And lastly, of course, as discussed in chapter 12, we use the ADS model when we're trying to analyze the economy based on the classical view. So just let me remind you why you don't really need the ADS model for the Keynesian view. All right. So let me show you what the ADS model looks like for Keynesian view. So you've got a downward sloping AD curve, but you have a horizontal and flat AS curve. So no matter how much you change your aggregate demand, your price level is still going to be fixed at P0. Okay, so P0 is the same as P1 or for all the price levels uh, that you can mention. So the price level here sticks at P0, so there's really no point. Since the prices don't change, there's no point analyzing the price level. Okay, so now we're going to figure out how to derive the aggregate demand curve. Now to derive the AD curve, you're going to need the ISLM model. So we know that the ADS model is a graph with price on the vertical axis and income on the horizontal axis, right? Therefore, we need to change the price level to see a change in the income level, then we can get our aggregate demand curve. And deriving the AD curve is the only time where the price level changes on its own. Okay, so let's move on to the derivation of the AD curve. You're going to need two sets of graph, okay? So the graph on top is going to be your ISLM model, and the graph below is going to be your ADS model. Take note that the ADS model has got price on the vertical axis instead of interest rates. Just in case some of you are wondering why I use the nominal interest rates, which is represented with I for the vertical axis in the ISI model, instead of R, which is the real interest rate, let me explain why. Thanks for watching a sample of the Quick Economics online learning experience. We hope you've enjoyed it. We believe that true happiness lies in realizing ambitions and dreams. That's why we make our products specific to your needs. 
simple to understand and captivating so that you can learn effectively while saving time, realizing those ambitions and dreams. The Quickonomics online learning experience is a range of supplementary lectures, tutorials and exam solutions in the form of videos which you can conveniently view anytime, anywhere. Watching our videos before and after your regular lessons at school, we aim to give you joy in learning and build academic confidence at the comfort of your own relaxed learning environment. So how can you begin? We welcome you to purchase Quickie Dollars to redeem the videos for full access to the Quickonomics online learning experience. Thank you for starting with Quickonomics.